Welcome back to Daily Planet Goes to India. I'm Kim Jaitiani. We're overlooking Mumbai, the country's largest city. And I'm Jay Ingram. And this country has three seasons. Mm -hmm. Summer, winter. And my favorite, the monsoons. But you know, it's also a country of contrasts. You right. know that. Mm -hmm. So while one part of the country can be suffering under an extreme drought, another can be flooded out. The heavy rains, flooding and overall moisture have raised some alarms at one of India's largest and most spectacular heritage sites, the Ajanta Caves. The key people there are battling nature to try and save the cave's ancient artworks. Those tiny openings in that black basalt were made 2200 years ago by unknown artists and they kept chipping away deep inside until they reached splendor. These caves are temples to Buddha. The sculptures tell tales of his life and death. But they also speak of incredibly sophisticated builders. This window was placed such that the day's first sunbeam would shine on Buddha. What remains in some caves is mostly stone, but others still have their original paintings. These refined murals sit on the crudest surface. The rock was plastered with a mixture of mud, cow dung, dried vegetation, and lime. But once again, the master builders knew what they were doing. Their paintings endure, and their 29 caves are now celebrated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Unique place in the world, fantastic, so beautiful. It is a place to see. We have no, no monument in India or in abroad such beautiful as Ajanta. And Mr. Singh means to keep it that way. Today, he's mixing mild chemical powders and liquids with filter paper. This is how they clean stone dirty with age. They spread this gooey pulp and keep it wet for 15 days. And through the process of osmosis, the dirt which had been accumulated on the stone surface, that is, that comes into the pulp. And then they prize away this dirty cast. Then they mix mild soap and ammonia. The stone is lathered and brushed. A little pressure and a power wash of distilled water reveal the face of Nagraja, the king of snakes. If only Mr. Singh's problems were all so simple and water was always a solution. It isn't. Every year, the monsoon saturates this area. In just one month, there can be 700 millimeters of rain. Here is why that's a problem. This volcanic escarpment was formed in layers. Water gets into the gaps between strata and travels into the caves. White stains are left where it just seeps, but it can also drip in the odd spot. Plaster falls, paint crumbles. To protect against the wet, the ceiling gets a coating from Mr. Singh. He uses a greatly diluted solution of polyvinyl acetate, a rubbery plastic. And here, a stone plaster is shoring up a vulnerable wall. Cracks are treated with a water repellent, ethyl silicate. They once used concrete, but it took in water. So now they use a stone plaster that's very much like basalt. They built canals on top of the caves to collect runoff and channel it away. But that still doesn't keep the water out. Now there's talk of stripping away the soil up there and sealing all the rock. They're even controlling the number of visitors. That's because breathing increases humidity. Only 40 can be in a cave when the humidity is high. And it does spike, according to tests. It goes from 30% in the dry season to a whopping 80% during the monsoon. So why do the caves have no climate controls? It has survived in its natural environment. If you change the climatic condition, there is a danger that some damage may occur to the paintings, which is not known to us. This cave was damaged by someone who meant well. 
now Singh must remove varnish that's gone so dark it hides the painting. To clean just three square meters, it'll take six people a whole year. And it's dangerous work. Because the paint is tempera, they must use harsh carcinogenic chemicals. The pigment will dissolve if you mix a little water into the, uh, into the solvent. So only thing which is left to us is the use of organic solvents to clean the paintings. What once looked like this, now looks like this. Clearly seen as the hunter king who misses a deer and accidentally strikes a man named Sama. 15% of the varnish is left on purpose. Singh is happy to leave it for a day when there's better technology. I am very satisfied, my colleagues are very satisfied. Whatever little we could do for the conservation of the heritage of this heritage of the world, which is unique in the whole universe. But don't think he can rest on his laurels. There are always metal bones that are needed and plaster flesh for figurines crumbling with age. Then there are holes in that crude plaster made by insects. So fumigation is always on the to-do list. And so is cleaning all that soot from incense burned 20 centuries ago. And dealing with the graffiti. And, well, as any homeowner knows, something always needs fixing. Even in a very special house built for a god. Still to come here on Daily Planet Goes to India, we'll show you how one of India's most mystical traditions has been dramatically changed. We'll also show you how one scientist is trying to bring safe water to India's slums.